Hello everyone. Today we'll be learning Taylor series expansions in Vedic way. You may be wondering why Taylor series out of the blue? Answer is simple. Just to have fun, play with numbers, no other purpose. For example, you have your Lego blocks, those plastic pieces. These are the basic building blocks. Usually we combine many of them and make big, big shapes and play with them, right? Same in mathematics. The basic building blocks are your arithmetic, your addition, subtractions, multiplications, divisions, squares, and square roots. Once you master these in Vedic way, you can simply create so many other forms of mathematics. You can simply have fun, as we will see today. Some of you may be wondering, uh, what is Taylor series? Okay. Okay, so you can see a couple of Taylor series expressions here. Okay, I'll give you an analogy. When we do divisions or square roots, okay, we have learned the Vedic way in elementary level and uh, intermediate level courses. When you do division or square roots, you get infinitely long decimal numbers. Do you remember? The same is true if we replace the numbers with symbols like x, y, or a, b, and we do divisions or square roots, you get these kind of infinitely long algebraic expressions. These are also called Taylor series expansions. Once you know how to do divisions and square roots in Vedic way, whether it is numbers or symbols, it doesn't matter if the same even an elementary school student can be taught these Taylor series expansions. Okay, so today I am going to give you a glimpse of it. We will have a quick recap of these arithmetic operations in Vedic way with the numbers, and then we will switch to algebra and create Taylor series expansions. Multiplication, okay, we have done so many times. This is the rule is vertically and crosswise. I'll skip this. You can Pause and take a look if you want. Uh, three digit multiplication. Okay, we have, we have five steps instead of three, like this. Okay, I'll skip this. Division. 321 divided by 63. How do we do? We do division in three steps divide, multiply, subtract, divide, multiply, subtract in a loop till the end of the problem is reached. We set up the problem like this. 321 is given here and the divisor 63 is, is split into two parts. First digit 6 is written below and the rest of the digits, only 3 here, is written above. We call this flag region. In Vedic division, only the first digit of the divisor is used for division and these flag digits are used to adjust the reminder. Notice the vertical line here. This is written one digit from the right because there is only one digit in the flag. Once division calculation reaches at this point, we can simply write down the answer. Here we go. First step, divide. 32 divided by 6 is 5. Reminder 2. We, we write the 2 just before the next digit 1, we make it a 21. Then multiply. We multiply the question here, the answer, the 5 and the flag digit here. 5 times 3 is 15. We subtract this 15 from this 21 and we get the reminder. That's it. The answer is 5 reminder 6. Once we arrive here, we can actually write down the answer like this with a reminder or we can put a decimal point here and a decimal point here and add zeros and continue division. That is also possible. We can use the same procedure for longer divisions as well. Divide, multiply, subtract. We have the problem 17496 divided by 72. We set up the problem same as before. We have 7 that we use for division and the flag is 2. Here we have a vertical line one digit from the right because there is one digit in the, in the flag. Here we go. First, division, 
17 divided by 7 is 2 remainder 3. Here we make a 34. And then we multiply. 2 times 2 is 4. We subtract 4 from 34, we get a 30. And we can continue division using this 30. 30 divided by 7 is 4 remainder 2. Here we have a 29. Then multiply 4 and 2 is 8. We subtract 8 from 29 and we get a 21 and we can continue division with 21. 21 divided by 7 is 3 remainder 0. We have a 6 here. So 3 times 2 is 6. 6 minus 6 is a 0. That's the final remainder. Algebraic divisions. Here we go. The procedure remains the same. Divide, multiply, subtract. For example, we have a problem 1 divided by 1 plus x. The funny thing is this denominator or the divisor 1 plus x can be written as x plus 1 also. Accordingly, we can set up this problem in two ways. Either we use 1 for division and x for flag or x for division and 1 for flag we can get completely different answers. These are your Taylor series expansions. Okay, so, okay, we'll check, we'll do this problem first. We go divide, multiply, subtract. First, divide. 1 divided by 1 is a 1. Reminder is 0. It's not shown here. Then, multiply. 1 times x is a x. We subtract x from this 0, we get a minus x. We can continue division using this minus x. So minus x divided by 1 is a minus x, remainder 0. And then we multiply minus x with the flag x here, we get a minus x square. We subtract minus x square from 0 and we get a plus x square and we can use this x square and continue division. So x squared divided by 1 is x squared and so on. This is one Taylor series for you. And we can also do this problem and we get completely different Taylor series expansion. As simple as that. We will have a quick recap of squaring using duplex operation. Do you remember it? Duplex D. Duplex of single digit numbers is simply the square of that number. For example, duplex of 4 is 4 square, that is 16. Duplex of two digit number, say AB is a two digit number, the duplex is 2AB. So for example, duplex of 41 is 2 times 4 times 1 is 8. And then we have duplex for three digit numbers, duplex for four digit numbers. Some examples are given here. You can take a pause and take a look. Here is how you can square any number using its duplexes. Combining duplexes of any number gives its square. For example, 41 square. We have three duplexes in this number. Duplex of 4, that is 16. Duplex of 41, that is 8. And duplex of 1, that is a 1. If we combine these three duplexes, the answer is 1681, as simple as that. Another example, 21 square. We have three duplexes here. Duplex of 2, which is a 4. Duplex of 21, which is 4. Duplex of 1 is a 1. We combine them, we get a 441. There were no carries here, that's why it looks too easy. Square roots. We can find the square root of any number using this four-step process. We will learn this using an example. Say we want to find the square root of 1369. Step 1. There are two pairs in this number, 13 and 69. Step 2. The approximate square root of the first pair, that is 13, is a 3. Because 3 times 3 is 9. Still, there is 4 remaining. So, we write that 4 as a reminder just before the next digit. And we make this a 46. Actually, the square root process involves division. The funny thing is we don't know the divisor. Okay, that is your step three. 
Divisor is simply the double of the first digit of the answer 3 here. So that is a 6. We will use this 6 as the divisor in the rest of the division process. And step 4 is simply division followed by subtract duplex operation. Okay, we go with division first. 46 divided by 6 is 7, remainder 4. So we have a 49 here. And then we have to find out the duplex of whatever is remaining after the first digit of the answer. That is 7. So duplex of 7 is a 49. We have to subtract this 49 from this 49. So it's a 0. So we don't need to continue the division after this. So this 1369 is a perfect square. We can use the same procedure to find out the square root of any big numbers as well. For example, we have a six digit number whose square root we want to find out. Here we go. Step one, we identify the case. We have three pairs here, 29, 37, and 64. Step two, the approximate square root of the first pair 29 is a 5. 5 times 5 is 25. Still there is 4 remaining. We write that 4 here and we make this a 43. Step 3. Find the divisor. Okay, divisor is nothing but the double of the first digit of the answer here. Okay, that will be a 10. And thereafter, step 4, we continue divide and subtract duplex operations. So divide. 43 divided by 10 is a 4 reminder 3. We have a 37 here. From 37, we have to subtract the duplex of 4. Duplex of 4 is a 16. So we subtract 37 minus 16 is a 21. Now we continue division using 21. 21 divided by 10 is a 2, remainder 1. So we make a 16 here. Here we reach a decimal point because we know there are three pairs in the question. So there will be three digits in the answer and there will be a decimal point and we'll see what are the numbers in the fractional part. Here we have a 16. So from 16, we have to subtract the duplex of 42. Duplex of 42 is 16. So 16 minus 16 is a zero. Okay, we'll see. Zero divided by 10. Okay, we continue the division. Okay, it will be a zero reminder zero. Okay, so here we have a four. From four, we have to subtract the duplex of four to zero. The duplex of four to zero is a four. Okay, if you subtract four from four, we got a zero. Okay, there is nothing else to divide. That means this number is a perfect square and the answer is 542. That's all. This much arithmetic, I think, should be taught in all elementary schools in the world. When I taught, when I teach Vedic mathematics, even seven year or eight year old children used to do these six digit square root problems without using pen and paper. You don't need to be born as a genius to do this stuff. You just need to be given the right tools to do to solve these problems. Algebraic square roots, the procedure remains the same. Just that instead of identifying the pairs of digits, we identify the terms. We will see with an example. Say we want to find the square root of 1 plus x. Here we go. This 1 is a term. This x is a term. And we can add as many zero terms as we want depending upon as many answer terms we want to write down. Step two, the square root of the first term one is a one and the remainder is zero. Step three, divisor is simply double this first answer digit. That means it's a two. And thereafter we simply do the divide and subtract duplex operation. Here we go. First, x divided by two will give you an x by 2. Remainder is a 0. Then we have to find the duplex of x by 2, which is x squared by 4. We have to subtract x squared by 4 from 0. So it will be a minus x squared by 4. 
and then we continue division. So minus x square by 4 divided by 2 is a minus x square by 8, remainder 0. And then we simply have to find the duplex of this and then subtract from 0 and divide with this 2 and then we get the next answer and so on. Here is your Taylor series expansion of a square root problem. As simple as that. Do you think will there be any better way than this to solve a square root problem? If you find out, please let me know. And the play continues. No child on this planet will be afraid of mathematics or at least Taylor series who ever watched this video. Today we have used basic building blocks like divisions and square roots and created a bigger block of Taylor series. And children can simply use these blocks and create much bigger blocks. Whether it is arithmetic or algebra or trigonometry or calculus, anything, if it is taught in Vedic way, it is pure fun and play. Thank you.